Hey everyone, today we are diving into a super cool project, the mini snake game console. If you've seen our previous snake game console with the big RGB matrix panel, this is its smaller, more portable sibling. The goal here was to shrink it down while keeping the same game logic, just tweaking a few things like display dimensions and the snake size, and even adding some upgrades. Now the snake has a gradient color, there's a satisfying beep when you eat the food, and best of all, it's a fully handheld console. It fits right in the palm of your hand runs on an ESP32 S3 development board with a 1.69 inch display and thanks to the onboard 500 mAh lithium ion cell you can game anywhere anytime we house everything inside a custom 3d printed enclosure which we designed in fusion 360 and printed on the creality k10 max so stick around because we are going to break down how this mini console was built and what make it such a fun little gadget by the way, do check out this project page for more details about the build process. Let's get started. Let's have a look at the Snake Game console first, which was a compact portable system powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico, featuring a 64 by 32 RGB matrix panel and a 3D printed enclosure. It runs a classic Snake game where you guide the snake using four directional buttons chase down the random red dot for points and try to avoid crashing into yourself. Plus, it got an onboard battery, so you can take it anywhere and play on the go. Then came the Pico Blaster, which takes the same hardware setup and turn it into a fast-paced Space Invader style shooter, with an additional custom control board that revamped the gameplay mechanics and color-coded projectiles. This game is all about reflexes and strategy. The player navigates a spaceship dodging incoming attack and firing back using two type of weapon, rapid fire bullets and a powerful blast. Both of these games were written from scratch and were a pain to code. Most of the development time was spent in creating the game logic and the hardware part for both devices were super easy and prepared in less than a day. For the mini version, I have only ported the snake game, but we could make more games for this device which could be an idea for a future project. For the design of this project, we first imported the 3D model of our ESP32 display into Fusion 360 along with the CAD file for our button PCB with buttons as well as the lithium battery and the push switch CAD file. Next, we organized the components in a logical and practical layout, positioning the switch PCB beneath the display, placing the battery behind both display and the switch PCB and positioning the push switch on the rear side just above the battery. Once everything was arranged, we proceeded to design an enclosure that encapsulates all the components and unifies them seamlessly. For aesthetics, I opted for a boxy retro design reminiscent of 1990s, drawing inspiration from the classic Nokia phones, elements of which can be seen in this form. The enclosure was then prepared and separated into two halves, the front enclosure and the lid part. The front enclosure houses the ESP32 display board and the switch PCB. The ESP32 display is pressure fitted in its position. The switch PCB is fastened in its place with 4M2 screws. The lid section holds both the battery and the power switch. For 3D print, we exported the mesh file for both pieces and printed them on our new Creality K10 Max with a 0.4mm nozzle and 25% infill with white hyper PLA. And it was super fast. We are using the ESP32 S3 LCD 1.69 display in our project as it is a low cost high performance MCU board that perfectly suit our needs. Equipped with a 1.69 inch capacitive LCD screen, a lithium battery charging chip, a 6 axis sensor with 3 axis accelerometer and gyroscope, this board is packed with features that enhance our snake game console. The onboard buzzer provides us audio feedback, with while the Type-C port interface allows for demo flashing and log printing. The ST7789V2 LCD controller supports a 240x320 resolution, though its active display area is 240x280. You can check out more about this display from its wiki page. As for sourcing this display, we got it from PCBWay's gift shop, 
which is an electronic marketplace where you can find all sort of electronic device and modules for their genuine price. In this project, we are repurposing one of our button board from our previous Snake Game Console project. This PCB features four buttons, each connected to ground, and four output pins which will be connected to ESP32's GPIO pins. By pushing each button, we pull down the GPIO pin to the ground, and the microcontroller register this change in button state. This board design was finalized by adding button in their proper location and connecting traces in the correct order, after which we exported the Gerber data for this PCB and sent it to PCBWay for samples. Following the completion of the board design, we ordered a white solder mask with black silk screen and submitted the PCB Gerber data on PCBWay's code page. After placing the order, the PCBs were received within a week and the PCB quality was pretty great. Over the past 10 years, PCBWay has distinguished themselves by providing outstanding PCB manufacturing and assembly services, becoming a trusted partner for countless engineers and designers worldwide. You guys can check out PCB Way if you want great PCB service at an affordable rate and low price. Button board assembly process was super simple. We first position the push button from the top side of the board. And then we solder their pads from the bottom side using a soldering iron. This was the code used in this project. I have included a brief breakdown of the entire code in this project article which you can check out to get code and other details about the project. The wiring process began by connecting 5 wires to the ESP32 dev boards GPIO2, GPIO10, GPIO16, GPIO18 and ground terminals. Next, we connect the ground wire to the ground terminal of the button board. The GPIO2 wire is attached to the switch board's left terminal. The GPIO10 is connected to the right terminal. GPIO16 is connected to down terminal. And GPIO18 is connected to the up terminal. We are using a 3.7 volt 500mAh lithium ion cell as the power source for our project. We now begin the power source assembly process by connecting the positive wire of battery to the NC of the push button. We add another wire to the common terminal of push switch. We have included a push switch between battery positive terminal so the battery power can be turned off and on with this switch. Next, we connect the battery positive and negative connection wire to the battery connector on the ESP32 board. By making this connection, we can now power this setup with our lithium ion battery. The final assembly process begins with the placement of ESP32 display on the front enclosure, which we push in place from the front side. Next, we pass the switch PCB from the inside of the front enclosure and place it on the front. This will hide the connection wire between ESP32 board and the switch PCB. The switch PCB is then secured in its place using 4 M2 screws. We now install a lithium battery inside the lid section and push the switch in its right location. Using hot glue gun, we apply hot glue to the push switch and the battery to secure both of them in their correct place. We next apply a hot glue to the rear side of display over the GPIO port, where we connected wires for the switchboard, 
preventing wires from being pulled from the ESP32 traces during the assembly process. Both half of the enclosure are now positioned together and 4 M2 screws are then used to connect them. Our snake game console mini device has now been completed. Here's the end result of this small build. The mini game console, a tiny handheld gaming device that brings classic snake game to life in a compact form. This whole design has a nostalgic vibe, kind of like the old Nokia 6110, instantly bringing back memories of early mobile gaming. Even though it's small, the console runs smoothly with a responsive control and a vibrant display powered by the ESP32 S3 LCD 1.69 inch. The gradient color snake, the buzzer beeps when you eat food and the custom button board all come together to make it feel polished and fun to play. And the 3D printed enclosure designed in Fusion 360 gives it a solid build that fits comfortably in your hand. Thanks to the onboard 500mAh lithium-ion battery, it's totally portable, letting you game anywhere, anytime, without needing a constant power source. The bright display and smooth gameplay make it just as engaging as the bigger version. But now it is way more convenient to carry around. For the next iteration, I would like to focus more on the game itself, which can be improved by further adding obstacles such as walls that when touched by the snake ends the game. As the snake become larger, its speed increases, which is one of the adjustments I like to add in the next version of this project. Also, I believe I could create a better and smaller body if we utilize a lipo cell in our future project, as well as custom PCB with SMD buttons to decrease the size of PCB and electronics furthermore. Overall, this project has been completed. In addition, we appreciate PCB way support of this project. Visit them for a variety of PCB related services such as stencil service, PCB assembly services as well as 3D printing services. Thanks for reaching this far and I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.